how are you today? I'm going to do English. Good, good morning. I hope uh, you have a good night last night and that you're doing well this morning. And we are reading in Hebrews 12. And I'll be announcing here, um, wasn't that amazing? Last week was 1,100 devotional. 1,100. Can't believe that. Thank God. Um, I should have had, even though it wasn't as meaningful as 1,000, but 1,100, that's a milestone. I should have, you know, bought some cannolis, brought them here. You know what a cannoli is? No, you don't. Some of you don't. It's an Italian pastry. If you go to 18th Avenue in Brooklyn, set near 75th Street, 15th Avenue, or 18th Avenue, 75th Street. I used to live there when I first got married. The best cannolis to me in Brooklyn. No. You can't have too many, though. You just They're so rich and sweet and good. And um, that neighborhood was interesting where I first lived. There were some wise guys that still lived around there then when I got married. And... That sense of humor, that the, or the sense of... I went into the candy store one day to have, uh, get uh, some bagels. Not a candy store, a luncheonette. And I saw, you know, bullet things on the, in the glass in the front. And what had happened is the guy the day before had been sitting there eating, and, and someone came in and wasted them. It was an arranged hit and all that. But the people who ran it, you know, they were into that culture, that mafioso culture. And I sat, I said, you know, no, I had some coffee waiting for what I needed. And I said, wow, look what happened. They went, yeah, these things happen. Some people don't do the right thing and they pay. And I went, what are you talking about? They said, yeah, but listen, it was very clean. You see any shattered stuff here? It was in and out. They were very neat. I went, neat. Somebody died. That was Brooklyn. Still parts of Brooklyn are like that. But parts of Hebrews 12 are like this. You have come to God, the judge of all. Come on, don't go back to the law. You've come back to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. And to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Okay, you've come to God, the judge of all. So just a reminder now, God's going to judge everyone. Your friends, your neighbors, people who scoff at God, people who are fake believers, God's going to judge everyone. Every secret will be made known. But we don't fear that because God has already passed our judgment onto Christ. He was judged for us. He died in our place. So the idea of God as judge to a believer is, yes, that means I'm going home. But to the unbeliever, woo. And you can con people, you can play people, as they say. No one's playing God. The secrets, motives. Oh, thank God we can run to Jesus and let him hold us close to him safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning on those promises, you've come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Here's the whole point of the book, the letter. The mediator of a new covenant. Not the old covenant, the new covenant. I stop again and say to you, do you understand the difference between the Old Covenant, the New Covenant, the Old Testament, the New Testament? Moses, Jesus, law, grace. The law with its holy commandments can save no one. No, but I'm going to try. No, no, no. I read that in Deuteronomy or in Exodus. Put the fear of God in me, Pastor Simbler. Good. It won't change your behavior, though, because what we need is a new heart 
and a new mind, and no one in the Old Testament got that through the law. The law doesn't have life in it. It was written on stone. Ah, but the new covenant under Jesus. Notice, it's a new, better covenant. The law brings death. Even though you promise to obey it, you've already broken it, so you can't fix it. Like someone does a crime, robs a bank, shoots a guard, they bring before the judge. Here in New York, I wonder if they'd even see a judge. They see it before the judge, and they go, hey, listen, judge, judge, before you go to a trial, anyway, I promise I will never do that again. I had a bad day. You know, my cousin Rosemary, she lost a baby. My friend Vito, he got kicked out of the Air Force Academy. I was very troubled, very agitated. I had agita. And that's why I held up that. But I'm not going to do it again. The judge doesn't care. For those of us who like to gravitate toward the law so we can have a good, shining report card. No, no. You do the crime, you do the time. How Satan still comes at all of us. And once you get under the law and death starts approaching, now you're scared to death before you even die. Because you start thinking, I messed up there, I messed up here. But when you come to Jesus, he's the mediator of a new covenant, a better covenant, because our sins have been washed away. Washed, erased forgiven, forgotten. Our sins are behind him. He doesn't look at them. If he looked at our sins, how could we worship him today? How could we read the Bible and be confident? I mean, he's our father now. He's not our judge. He's our father. For some people, he's going to be their judge. They are never going to know him as father. But we're Christians. Come on. Get up and start praising God today. Get that mopey look off your face. You're a child of God. He's our Father. Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, the covenant of grace, purchased for us on the cross of Calvary. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.